All right, so I'd like to just check out this um, particular field and see if it's a you know, reasonably good electric field, right, in free space. So let's see what it looks like, right? Uh, it's a uniform field, and whenever um, the absolute value of x minus a is um, greater than zero, right, so when x is greater than a, uh, or x is less than minus a, then it has a electric field that's going in the x positive x direction, sort of like this. All right. Uh, but then there's a spot where it sort of disappears, right? And that's, like I said, at minus a, and then it reappears on this other side. So it's sort of like a um, shielded spot, right? Um, so I've shielded off the uh, this region from this external electric field. And so the question is, is does this entire thing satisfy um, the relationships in um, empty space? So, uh, you know, I always do these in the way that uh, we write them out. So, you know, I want you to see how everything works as far as the homework is concerned. So given, what am I given? I'm given the electric field. Okay. Yeah, don't, uh, or actually it's just a vector field right now. We'll find out if it's a good electric field. Actually, it could be a good electric field and just not be a good um, electric field in free space. We'll find out which of those it is. And it's E of R is equal to E naught x hat theta absolute value of x minus A. This is the heavy side step function again. Um, now we want to know if it if it uh, satisfies um, the free space equations. If this is an E field in empty space. Okay. So this stuff here, where I've written this out. Up above, that doesn't go on your homework when you turn it in. I already know what that is. I gave it, I typed it up, and I gave it to you, right? That's just the problem statement. When you're interpreting the problem statement down here, that's what I want to see. All right. And then let's see what you're working working on. So how am I going to do that? Well, there are two requirements, right? The curl and the divergence both have to be zero for this thing to be a good electric field in um, empty space. So let's see. Let's try. Let's start with the curl. Okay. And remember the curl is just del cross E, right? Which in this case is, let's see, x hat d dx plus y hat d dy plus z hat d dz. And I take the cross product of that with this field here, which is x hat e0 um, theta x minus a. Okay, um, so how do we want to take the curl this time? Um, you know, it's all the same thing, it's just how I feel like uh, going through the motions, right? So let's just start with x. This way then I'll take the y component of this times the um, z component of this guy and z back at it. Uh, in this case, there are neither of those uh, coordinates, right? This is all in the x direction. So this whole x coordinate has to be zero because this guy is in the x direction. All right, let's see what else. Then I add in the y component. Okay, and I go cyclically, right? So y, z, and the x component here. So that's e0 theta x minus a, or the absolute value of x minus a. Uh, minus d, ooh, we've got a zero here again, dx, right? So um, cyclic minus anti-cyclic uh, plus z hat. So z, the next one after z is x. So we x, y, z. So we're at z. So if it's x, it's y, then z, then z, z back y. y, z, x, x, z, z over here. So cyclic means 
you know, we keep on going around in a circle like that. X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, anti-cyclic is Z, Y, X, Z, Y, X, Z, Y, X, right? So Z, is, we do the DDX again. This is on that zero that we keep running into minus uh, DDY of this E naught theta, the absolute value of X minus A. All right, now, there's no y dependence here, so this is zero, this is zero, this is zero, no uh, z dependence here, so that's zero. So everything here is zero, which gives us a nice zero here, which means the curl is okay. We're okay with the curl, all right? So let's check um, the divergence. Okay, and that's now the dot product. Right? So we're going to get a sing single number for this, rather than a vector. Although we start with this del um, operator, this vector operator, x, d, d, x, y, d, d, y, z, d, z, dot. Uh, this guy here, which is x hat e naught theta x minus a, right? Um, so y and z are just zero, so we just have the d, d, x of e naught theta x minus a and l let's just do the zeros for fun I would never do this myself I would just ignore them but you may as well do that so you explicitly see that the y and z components just happen to be zero here or y and z derivatives just happen to be zero there are no more components because we've got a scalar right no more um, little direction vectors so now we just take this um, derivative. First we pull out the e naught, and we have d dx of theta x minus a. So this is the heavy side step function again. The derivative of the heavy side step function is the Dirac delta function, right? So we go from a step to a spiky thing. So we have e naught delta, the absolute value of x minus a, right? Which means that this, if we take the integral of um, this uh, divergence, it's going to be e naught at x minus a, or at x equals plus or minus a. Um, and then we have what? Um, we have to take the derivative with respect to x of the absolute value of x minus a. And that is the derivative of the absolute value of x minus zero, right? And what's the derivative of the absolute value of x? Well, um, I'm not sure if you've done this before. It's not really difficult, right? You remember from long, long ago that um, the derivative of, that the absolute value of x is the square root of x squared. And you can use that to get what you want. So that means e naught is equal to delta absolute value of x minus a um, times one half one over the square root of x squared times d d x of x squared, which is going to be two x. So this is going to be the absolute value. So we have e naught delta the absolute value of x minus a. Um, multiplied by x over the absolute value of x, right? Or another way to write this is to write that as just saying it's the sign s i g n of the of the of x, right? So um, either way you want it, right? Uh, but basically you get something like that. Now that doesn't really um, give us much. It says that everything's more or less okay because this delta is zero everywhere plus, at plus or minus a, except at plus or minus a where you've got this um, sp sort of spiky infinity thing, right? Because that's what happens with the delta function is that it's sort of technically or in some way it's in infinite at that point um, where delta is equal to zero, right? So this doesn't really check out, so um, the answer 
is um, it fails at the border at the border uh, x equals plus or minus a all right uh, but there's more to it than that and so if you're watching this you're going to get a um, little bit of what you're going to get in the next chapter or in next week or whatever well, you know depending on where I am with what I'm trying to do um, but you will find later on that del dot e is equal to rho of r over epsilon naught okay where rho is the um, charge density uh, that's creating the field all right um, so uh, here we can say rho of r is equal to uh, what do we, what did I say here uh, epsilon naught times del dot e I sort of prefer writing it that way and which is equal to epsilon naught um, e naught delta x minus a times sine of x, right? So that's one way to do it. Uh, one thing you can do though is wherever you see this delta, you can instead of writing a um, volume charge, you can write um, a, a uh, surface charge. So what I'm saying here is that I have a surface charge here at x equals a or minus a or I guess another way to write it is as a piecewise function it's equal to uh, e naught e, e at um, x equals a minus epsilon naught e naught at x equals minus a and zero elsewhere. All right, so this is why it fails in a mathematical sense. So this is not empty space, there's something there. But this is, this is the reason why um, physically is there's a charge. Right, right at this minus a and a, and that's actually what's um, doing the shielding from that electric field, right? And so, in some way, this this charge has to be dependent on that electric field if it's always going to be um, if it's always going to be a barrier to an electric field. And that's all I've got for that. I just wanted to give you an example of how you do the checking the curl and checking the divergence, and maybe a little bit of work with those heavy, heavy side and direct delta functions. Um, they're going to be very important uh, later on, and we're going to use them marginally from now on. It's again, I mean, that's all that's all you're ever going to do with them is either uh, integrate or uh, differentiate, and it's not going to be anything to worry about. All you have to do is just remember how they work together, right? And how they can help you chop up a big ugly integral into a into a few pretty simple ones. All right. Um, and that's what I've got for you today, and I will see you in class. Bye now.